Still looking for that perfect summer top? Or do you want to try layering over the summer, but it's just way too hot? Even better, are you looking for a top to wear to your next Halloween party? Have no fear, because the spiderweb halter top is here. You're in luck, because for the effort of making one top, you're also getting a wall hanging. This top can be crocheted by a complete beginner, basically. You can make this in an hour or two, guaranteed. If not, you'll get your money back. It's okay because you didn't pay anything. The materials needed are any type of yarn. I'm using a cotton yarn, a pair of scissors, as well as a crochet hook. Let's get right into it. So we're going to be timing this whole process. And first we're going to make a slip knot. Thread your hook through the loop and make a chain of four. We're going to connect them with a slip stitch to make a magic circle. Then chain five. Double crochet into the magic circle. And chain two. We're going to do that six more times. So double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, and one more. And once you're done, you're just going to slip stitch into the third chain of the first five chains to join. So for row three, we're going to be chaining seven. Then double crochet into the next double crochet from row two. Chain four. And repeat that six more times. Double crochet. Chain four. Double crochet, chain four again. And we're gonna go around that same way. And once you get to the end of the circle, slip stitch into the third chain of the original chain seven. All right, so now we're on row four, chain nine. And double crochet into the next double crochet stitch from row three. And then make six chains. Double crochet, make six chains, and we're going to keep repeating that all the way around. You're doing an amazing job so far. Once you've gone all the way around, slip stitch 
into the third chain of the nine chains. For me, I hit the four minutes and 30 seconds mark and chain 11 for row five. Double crochet into the next double crochet from row four, chain eight, double crochet, chain eight, and then we're going to repeat this pattern of double crochet, chain eight, double crochet, chain eight until the end of the round. Once you are done, slip stitch into the third chain of the original 11 chains. For row 6, chain 13. And then double crochet into the next double crochet from row 5. then chain 10. We're going to be repeating this pattern of one double crochet and then chaining 10 six times and slip stitch to the third chain of the original 13 chains. Once you're done with that, it'll be around 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Now that we are in row seven, chain 15, Then double crochet into the next double crochet from row 6. Chain 12. And we'll be repeating this pattern of one double crochet and chaining 12 six more times. And as always, don't forget to end with a slip stitch. For row 8, chain 17. Then double crochet into the next double crochet from row 7. Chain 14. We're going to repeat this pattern of one double crochet and chaining 14 six more times. Ending with a slip stitch on the third chain of the 17 chains. For row nine, we're going to chain 19 chains. and then double crochet into the next double crochet from row eight. Then chain 16 chains.
and then repeat the pattern of crocheting one double crochet and then 16 chains six more times. slip stitch on the third chain of the 19 chains. We have passed 25 minutes, so now it's time for a nice stretch break. You can follow along the stretch that I just did. And now we only have one row left. For row 10, we're going to be chaining 21 chains then double crocheting, chaining 18 more chains. And then repeating that pattern of one double crochet and 18 chains six more times. So remember this is for an extra small. For a larger size top, just keep increasing by two chains per row, as we have been doing, until it fits across your body in the way that you like. and then slip stitching in the third chain of the 21 chains to join. And now we've reached around 31 minutes and although most of the top is finished, now we need to make the straps for the halter. So just staying in the same position as you were after making the slip stitch, start chaining around 75 chains. And this is for the neck part of the halter top. And once you've chained 75 chains, pull your hook like so, and then pull from both ends to tighten. And we're going to do the same thing to the next double crochet that is next to the first strap that we just made. After inserting your hook and pulling your yarn through it, chain another 75 chains. You can always increase the number of chains to make it fit better, but this is what I'm currently doing. After 
after cutting the yarn, pull from both sides once again. And this just keeps the yarn from unraveling. Now we're going to be inserting straps to go around the back of your body. So after inserting your hook into the next double crochet area to the left of both of the straps, we're going to be crocheting around 50 chains. But if you have a larger size, just feel free to increase the number of chains until you see that you can tie it comfortably across your body. And we're going to do the same thing to the double crochet side that is to the right of both of the halter straps. So just do the same number as you did for the left side. Then fasten off and pull the yarn from both sides. Now we've passed around 43 minutes. And this is the really fun part and is completely optional for the top. So I like making my spiderweb top seem a little bit more realistic. And so instead of just making the web look perfectly symmetrical and straight, I like adding these strands of yarn to make it look a lot more distressed. And I think it fits that sort of subversive theme or a Halloween theme much better as well. So basically what I do is I insert my hook into parts of the top. I'll pull the yarn through and then I'll make a chain, then pull the yarn all the way through to the right. And after fastening both sides or pulling both sides, I cut off the yarn at a pretty long spot and I'll just keep doing this all over the top until it's as distressed as I want. My favorite thing to do is to add this distressing detail to the bottom of the top just so that it seems almost like a fringe and gives the illusion that the spider web was ripped off of somewhere. And here's the grand reveal. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did and I'm going to have lots of tutorials, studio vlogs, and design challenges coming up so please subscribe if you'd like to see what I create next. Thank you for being such good listeners and I'd love to see you again.